What's up guys, I'm Salty Mike, and this is your Star Citizen Week in Review for March 28th, 2022. 3.17 is still in Evocati. This isn't good. And we got that delayed Star Citizen Live with the EUPU feature team. And uh, yeah, the first look at hull stripping is actually here. All that and more on today's Week in Review. And as always, if this is your first week in review, this is where I take all of the official Star Citizen news each week and pile it into one video with some of my opinions in there as well. Uh, I do also live stream on twitch.tv slash salty mic every day but Monday so I can get this video out to you guys. And go ahead and check out my second channel, Salty Mike 2, where we post uh, other like live stream reactions to other Star Citizen content, as well as live reactions to ISC, things like that. But Let's jump into this because we have a lot to get through this week. We had a patch watch post. So even though 317 is an Evocati, they are sharing some of the features with us. And a lot of these things seem to be the things that aren't usually mentioned in any roadmap updates, things like that. There was an FPS weapon refactor. They adjusted some animations. More importantly, they adjusted recoil values across a lot of the rifles, most of the weapons, uh, basically every weapon. And uh, most of the weapons don't have a lot of recoil. Uh, they have some weird like weapon spread stuff as well. Uh, so we'll be excited. I, I just think it'll be exciting to try out the new weapons, see how they feel. The gauntlet rifle, is now having a three round burst to go with the five round burst so you have two choices the five round burst just takes a longer downtime before it can fire again then there was a turret acceleration change this seems like a balancing change because turrets were balanced in the uh this is too easy direction and uh maybe a little bit too powerful so this should slow those snappy turrets down just a little bit because they were again a bit too snappy uh to turn i guess is what they were thinking there uh ship positional desync this is a big one uh they fixed a delay and they a delay they placed in uh, it seemed like two seconds almost to reduce jitter so there was a time where our ships were like jittering and moving around a lot i think we talked about this last week but basically it should make dogfighting a lot more real time realistic better uh, but hopefully this jitter won't be too bad because i would expect it to come back um and I'm just happy they took the time to address it, so uh, good on them there. ATC landing, so you can press the button to call the air traffic controller now. Just a rant, you can set a button to it, so that's really good. Player inju injury polish pass, uh, they decrease the chance of in instant death. We talked a lot about this last week already. Uh, they increase the likelihood of injuries occurring, thus needing to actually use the new medical pens or the gun. Uh, the biggest change is that bleeding is no longer insanely fast. It was almost impossible to pull out a pen and heal yourself before there was a server issue as well uh, that maybe this uh, kind of prevents that server issue from being too problematic and then there was also a balance to hunger and thirst uh, they're a bit more aggressive now sprinting jumping punching all those have a larger effect on your thirst and hunger than they had before uh, they also mentioned in isc that they will persist past your play sessions uh, video updates Talking about ISC, this week's ISC, they started out with the player experience feature. Uh, you know, the player experience team, a feature on them. They usually do origin stories about one person. This time they did it on an entire team. These people are some of the most important members of the entire dev team if you play Star Citizen, if you play the game. And this is why. There's traditional QA and we have the live QA from the player experience team. Traditional QA takes care of upstream features as they're getting developed while play experience actually attack things from a player experience point of view going through the motions that a player would go through to try to target the issues in a way that dev qa probably wouldn't be able to reproduce and in the past qa constantly came back at us and said they couldn't reproduce or the classic it works on our servers comments and uh they were incredibly frustrating there is a lot more to the feature team about their in the feature about the process and a tiny bit on the Ares ion nerf and other things but i see these guys at the people who replace us as the alpha testers and we can just 
play the game and give our feedback, honest feedback, and report bugs the way the way you feel it may actually like make a change and not be ignored or not be hey well it works on our servers comments right so i, I think these guys are incredibly important and uh, i'm just really happy to see them getting their time of day we saw this team was gradually being put together i think about a year ago and now we're really seeing their process and i'm i'm seeing major issues that i have being at least looked at by them if not resolved through them um more often now than anything i was dealing with before then they did a sprint report a basic one on on random features the first one is docking collars at orison uh some people mentioned this being the port alasar replacement because jared said above crusader when he mentioned the august dunlow station but the august dunlow station is the orison spaceport so this is docking at orison is what's happening here. Drake Corsair, they're showing in gray box. It looks very much like a Caterpillar, which is my style. I really like the Caterpillar interior. It's one of my favorites. Drake Paints, uh, they showed off the Vulture. They showed four different paints on it. My favorite is the first one. I just like the yellow for industrial kind of ships. Um, Reclaimer Rex, this is from the Montreal team and they're really being integrated and moving quickly. Uh, they showed some Habs for NPCs being integrated into these as well. Um, and yeah, th that will be kind of automatically added to them as well as uh, what location you're in could be what wear and tear goes on. There could be snow and snow biomes, plants where it makes sense, things like that. Um, and then salvage. I think this is our legitimate first ever look at what salvage may be. Um, at least the whole stripping part of salvage. Again, I uh, am very much in the feeling that this isn't really salvage this is hull stripping it's kind of its own separate thing but it'll tie into salvage the full mechanic when that actually is a thing but this is just a showcase of the vfx it does look really nice i'm just wondering how this will all fit and become useful in the pu i know it's got to do with repairing um, i'm just looking forward to hearing more about it in the coming months then we had a star citizen live on the eu pu feature team and I, I do break this down a little bit but not that much so make sure if you haven't that you check out the description the link to this will be there this is a feature team these are the people who make the features that we play so the first thing they talked about was how long will the process to refuel take it's depending on the tank size so uh for example we balanced it that the gladius right now is with the standard nozzle and the standard fuel pots roughly 40 seconds so that is like the the, the ship that we expect to use this mechanic the most and uh yeah well <laughs> if you want to refuel an 890 jump it will take its time because it has giant tanks and it yeah it's it's not that something that that we can magically increase the number because we we want to stick to like a certain reality there i'm not entirely sure why i included this but just in case you haven't been following the project for that long they want things to feel realistic so 40 seconds for the smaller ships are fine but minutes and long time for larger ships is 100 percent expected from them um and yeah, so just kind of informing you there in case you didn't know. Uh, the next thing was, what are the plans to improve multi-crew mining, which has been my pain point for the last year or so. About the bigger rocks, so that could be a short-term solution to the momentarily unattractive multi-crew mining, but we have bigger plans for that. Some of the, the visions that we have is that uh, we have some weak points that need to be hit at the same time and even players need to make them explode at the same time so imagine a situation where you are with your with several prospectors targeting the same stone everyone hits the same weak point of the stone and then you have to time it so that you don't damage other pieces of the rock and then the the rock uh, splits and then you can proceed your mining now i absolutely think this is a very good solution for part 
of the problem with mining. And he mentioned the mole here playing more of a role as well, but he sort of brushed off the idea of larger rocks, which I think there's a reason for that. He designs the mining mechanics, but he doesn't deal with the distribution of minerals, so that's not really his job, so he kind of brushed it off. That doesn't mean that it's not going to happen or it's not important. I really hope that's the case, because um, I think the short-term solution that he mentioned is actually the long-term solution. And they really touch more on that sentiment here. I, I'm, I'm not a fan, huge fan of, of Quintanium being the only profitable resource. Uh, I have the feeling that, that it, it is something that will change once we have crafting there and player demands and maybe even AI demands there so that, that the, the values of each item shift. From a design perspective, uh, correct me if I'm wrong on this, Torsten, we, we don't want there to be you know, just the one uh, thing that's valuable to mine. We want it to be valuable for you to mine different things at different times in different places based on market conditions, nearby shops, etc. And rarity. So if, uh, if a material is more rare than another, it should also be worth more. This is really the issue. The idea of one mineral being the only thing worth mining is not fun at all, uh, but I'll die on my hill that distribution of rocks and the amount and the needing to fill your cargo hold is significantly more important than anything else they've done with mining, but mining is, and hopefully in 318 with the cargo refactor, not just about the action of mining, the raising and lowering the power and breaking rocks, but it's the logistics of finding the ore, extracting it, and then hauling the material to a refinery. It's all of those things. Mining is really one of the only complete loops that we have, and it's lacking, right? And since I didn't put an ATC out this week, I'll be putting together a highly edited, detailed video on my thoughts that I have about mining, and I had a little bit of an epiphany this week, um, after watching this SCL, I'm going to share that with you in detail in that video. So make sure you get subscribed and check that out if you haven't yet. The last thing, and it, it it's quick, but it really changes everything, sort of. Right now, our focus is getting all the features done once so you can you can start iterating over them. So I said sort of because it changes nothing about the communication on the game dev side. They've always said that the plan was to put out all the careers and features in a tier zero state and then iterate on them. But for the last however many years, they've only worked on mining, which is very different from the way they communicated things. So now the actions seem to be in line with that tier zero element. So yeah, it kind of changes everything. Personally, I hate this because I don't think that the game will be enjoyable while we're waiting for these features to leave a tier zero state, but I do also think it's the best decision for the game overall. And, you know, get these things in, get a feeling for how they are, how we use them, and then adjust and iterate and make better from there. It just makes sense, but it sucks to be a player that wants to play Star Citizen. And then, obviously, it's a long show, it's an hour, so some quick hits here. Um, if you blow up a Starfare, the fuel will blow up with it, but in the future, the pods could detach, uh, probably a 318 thing. They still do plan to do subsurface mining on our land claims and around moons. Uh, I could have clipped out the life support things, but, because they were detailed, but the whole thing is, is, um, yeah, it seems like they're kind of far away. So they're going to limit the number of players that you can have on a ship by using this. That doesn't mean that you can't fill your ship like a clown car, but there'll be components like scrubbers and things that you'll have to replace that are going to wear and tear quickly if you have too many people in a ship than it can handle, right? Temperature and pressure will also play a factor on these things. Um, yeah, it just... It seems like a way off, a ways off, so I didn't think that there was value in taking the time out to clip those. Uh, work has begun on the engineering UI and screens for the overall systems. Um, all teams will need to update their side of the game to integrate with this. It is an incredibly um, big system and life support and the room system are all gonna be part of it. So that was really the SCL. It was really good listen, but a lot of it was 
kind of far off stuff. So um, I didn't do too much detail on that one. And then for other updates, new subscriber items, two new salvo frag pistols, which is one of my favorite guns and a laser pistol. I really think these kind of sub flares are better for the current system. If you're going to flood us with items, at least make that item unique and not just a paint, right? Uh, sneak peek. This really looks like a weapon from a Banu Merchantman, I think, but I actually have no idea what it is. What do you think? I, I looked at the Reddit guesses. They guessed anywhere from a handheld weapon all the way up to a Snubcraft. So leave a comment below and let me know what you think it is. And then Jump Point, there was one. It's uh, refueling and rivers. So those are the main topics for the magazine this month, if you want to check that out. And lastly, a lore post was about a Tavarin living in the UEE with what seemed like adopted parents. I didn't read the whole thing, but it looks interesting if you're into the lore. So that'll do it for this week's Week in Review. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I uh, enjoyed my time uh, out of the country, I guess, and on a cruise ship with my wife. It was a great time. Um, and yeah, I just appreciate all the comments. I was able to get internet for a little while while I was in the Bahamas, and I was reading all the comments on the last Week in Review, and you guys were so kind. So thank you, as always. Uh, I really appreciate it. And we also hit some... I don't support this or i don't um promote this i should say but we hit a record for the number of um members on the channel so if you guys don't know you can join the channel it's a way to financially support the youtube channel i mostly get most of my support on twitch because that's where i spend my most time but it's an option if you guys are out there and without ever even mentioning it a bunch of you guys did it so thank you so much and uh yeah thanks for watching and i'll see you guys next week